with a yo ho ho, it's Tale of the Toaster. Welcome back to Let's Play Super Smash Bros. Brawl Adventure Mode, the Subspace Emissary. Very hard. In the last video, we beat the path to the ruins. Where do you think we're going in this video? Why, maybe we're going to the ruins. So you got a choice of two characters. There's no introductory cutscene, you just have to choose between Pokemon Trainer, or rather Squirtle and Lucas straight away. So drop through that section quickly. No collectibles over there, so just get withdrawing through all these mites and these Barbaras who will blow the mites into your face, which is an inconvenience. Get that trophy of Electrode up there. It's not inside a cube, so I don't think it's necessary for 100%, but it's a collectible, which is right in front of your face. You might as well go for it. I know I did. So mites would Help, it would help if they would stop being a pain. They might want to consider my feelings. And Barbaras is just completely still at the moment. And we get to respawn past that whole section of death anyway, yay. If you stand on top of these platforms and then it goes back into the wall, it can uh, instant kill crush you. So that Barbaras will try to push you into the spikes. You can just take damage from the spikes by walking into the side of these platforms. You don't have to have it drop onto your head. But get that cracker launcher and then we can use it to beat up some flows. Flows can only attack you when they're on full health. That's something I didn't point out before. I should use PSI magnet to absorb the attacks of that Rotorit. But we got a downward segment here. Only hit that switch. The rest of the other two will just make the floor give way with no doors behind it. And then that leads to an auto scroll segment, and I got hit by the most easy to avoid jets of flame in the game. And am I going to take me out here? Not quite. The fire jike actually saved me, which was nice of it. Don't miss this collectible, Lucas. Okay, I broke the cube, that's all you need to do. I didn't get to collect the trophy, I think it was an Animal Crossing character didn't get to collect the trophy, but you don't actually have to collect the trophy for 100%, I believe. So fire primage. Maybe you could breathe some fire into my PSI magnet. Oh, oh, I was going to get hit by those spikes. PSI magnet doesn't have to be facing the right way to actually absorb the projectile, which is what it does. It absorbs projectiles and heals you for it. Yeah, you can be facing the other way around, and Lucas will turn around to face the projectile. But... I didn't get to absorb anything anyway, so we've got a door coming up pretty soon. Gotta make sure you don't miss this. Don't miss it! Good, I went through the door. I got through it. And so we got an area with lots of platforms going up and down. Some of them are passed through, some of them aren't. And where's all the platforms? Okay, they're starting up again. That was weird. Long time off. Put a max in tomato there, so now I'm on 37%. I may be a stock down, but I'm in good health otherwise. So if you do go through that door, you don't have to bother with the platform anymore, you just drop to the bottom. So some massive... Uh, forgotten the name. Well, those, those enemies will spawn. But, oh look, I was wanting an Ivysaur, let's just walk into a room and... Oh, you can't catch a fainted Pokemon, that's against the rules. But regardless, we just walk into a room and, oh look, there's one of the two Pokemon out of the 649 total as of Gen 5 that I was wanting. Wasn't that lucky? Although really, at the time of recording, there's been seven Gen 6 Pokemon revealed, so maybe there would, well, there would be 646 Pokemon in total. No, 656. Don't fail at math. I already failed to count the number of letters in the word gibbering in my interview with Sean of Nintendo. I should link to, I'll have to link to that in the description now that I've logged it, but have a look at it. It was fun. So we got some Armites here and uh, Auto Lance. Don't get hit by their teaming up slashing. I mean, the two enemies they put together, one with an annoying sword and the other one with an annoying sword. But a max intimato when I'm on full health anyway, and look, we're using a new character. The character with the worst crouch in the game. This is Ivysaur, Pokemon Trainer's second Pokemon out of the three total. He's not that good for Subspace Emissary because a lot of enemies resist his moves with the grass effect. 
and he's not that fast, and a lot of his attacks don't do that much damage. In general, Squirtle's better, especially because he can use Withdraw to plow through the levels quite easily. But I'm going to use Ivysaur for this section. So Borboras I'm going to get rid of, and then we have an Armite, who is still continuing to be a problem, as always. But now, he is dead, so he cannot terrorize the Island of Trophies anymore. That's what the area is actually called in the Subspace Emissary. We are on the La Island of Trophies, or Land of Trophies, something like that. One of the two names. And fire! Ivysaur doesn't like fire in Pokemon or Smash Brothers Brawl. As I've said a few times before, if Ivysaur gets hit by fire, he'll receive 10% extra knockback. And just when I was in the 200% damage range, they give, them, they give us some maxed tomatoes, but anyways, it's easy to figure out what you have to do here. Hit the switches to open doors, and I was too late there because I was too busy fiddling with blue tack. Borboras will try to stop you going through the door, so I'll try to stop you from living. Just make sure to hit every switch you can. If you do it quickly enough, I didn't do it quickly enough. So let's drop down here and hit this switch, and then we can go back up again. I suppose that helps me show everything off anyway. Just hit every switch, and that will open all the doors you can think of. There is a collectible down there. So while you would think, just hit every switch, and then you could go through that door quickly enough, you're going to have to wait for the door to close, because you need to get this collectible for 100%. It's a bunny hood, so it'll let you do that segment all over again but more quickly, except you're kind of more fail prone because of these enemies being a pain, these bitons. So let's try and get rid of the bitons, if the blue tack would stop failing, and hopefully nothing can disrupt me now. So do we drop back down? No, I'd have to go all the way back round again for a bunny hood. And that, oh, I, I can get through in time, good. Ow! Oh, that was an inconvenience. So one of these switches you do want to hit it will lead to a door i not it's the yeah it's the switch on the right you want to hit to reveal a door and then there's a max in tomato which is useful because i can heal i ought to have waited until after this fight really in case i got hit by them i didn't all right so lots and lots of stickers and a trophy of the lightning bolt hit that switch and you can go back through the door and progress on with the main level so let's do exactly that. Try to use the X button or whatever button makes you jump on your controller instead of tap jumping there so you don't accidentally go back through the door. I could have absorbed that with CSI Magnet, but just walk past that tower town, go through the door. And then no introductory cutscene, not, nothing like that. We're just chucked straight into a battle with the other conveniently placed Pokemon that the Pokemon trainer was wanted to catch. We just have gone into this completely different environment on this floating platform in the middle of nowhere, having a battle with Charizard. I mean, it's quite spontaneous and random, to say the least. But it's fun. It is always fun to battle an actual character in the subspace emissary, so let's do that. I'm uh, spamming smash attacks a lot but yeah meteor smash and that gets rid of charizard 55 percent not bad dot jpg and so charizard is defeated and according to super smash brothers brawl you can catch a fainted pokemon after all the pokeball just acts like a boomerang and returns to red and then we have another cutscene straight afterwards where we walk into this vast and open stage where there doesn't appear to be an exit. Can you remind me why we're here again? No matter, it's very tall. But stage clear. Electro And lightning. They're quite related. But instead of say, oh, I failed to get 100%, I'll have a look at that level after I've beaten the wilds off screen and I'll try to 100% it. So here we're looking at this thing. But those appear to be missiles, so it's obviously a threat. Ike just takes the initiative and jumps off. And then a scratch of the head from Marth, he's like, oh, I better follow him then. 
So we've got a choice of three. I'm going to go with Marth, then Meta Knight, then Ike. Ike is far worse than Meta Knight and Marth and Adventuring. The other two are so fast with such quick attacks, and then Ike is so slow. I almost called him Ivysaur. Or Radiator, as I should be calling him. See, Marth, his good range can just batter all these enemies. So we got the Gamiga. This is the second time we've encountered one, and this time I'll actually explain it. So Gamiga has multiple different faces. The smaller the base, the less HP it has. But every time you get a fully deplete a Gamiga base's HP, it will lose that base and then the head, which you need to kill in order to defeat the enemy itself. Whoa, that trap, that Trowlon crashed, and so did I, apparently. But yeah, to defeat the Gamiga, you need to beat the head. Some characters will be able to just jump straight over the Gamiga, but there is a little invisible wall above the Gamiga's head. That or it's just got a big hitbox. So it tries to stop you from jumping over it, but it is still possible. So this Rotor is actually quite dangerous, because it'll come out of nowhere at high speed. But get that Maxim Tomato and the Trophy Stand, and there's going to be a bit of a barrage of book arts if you're not careful, so get through the door with the Trophy Stand in hand, which I've now lost, and warning sign platforms. I do like the whole yellow and black stripe pattern, so I like those platforms in one sticker. Thank you, game, for giving me one sticker. Yeah, the wilds, it's a fairly long level, and... It's not that entertaining either, mainly just because I don't like desert settings. There's a trophy of Dixie Kong there, try not to miss. This is actually a fairly hard segment to get through damage free, but make use of the shield and just know when everything's coming, and my shield's been broken, so I'm open to an attack there. Gliding is the fastest way to move, as I've said so, so many times, so I should really be using that. I thought there was a trophy down there, it's just a scope primid. So this is an example of one of the times in the game you can act Ooh, strawberry. STRAWBERRY! You can actually hitch a ride from a Trowlon and it will help you, I believe. Yeah, there's a Trowlon here which is going to do the platforming for me, basically. And then I will swipe it with my sword for its effort. So now we're introduced to another enemy. New enemy, the Armank. So it's a green blob in a tank. The Armank's trophy is discussing the whole myth. Is the Armank just the green blob, or, or is the tank actually part of its body? So it's never confirmed, but the only part of Armank you can actually damage is the green blob. When it brings that whole crane out of its body, you need to attack that and make it explode. You can drop down here, but there's nothing down there. But yeah, so you need to attack the crane enough so that it will explode, and then you'll be able to expose the green blob and get all the collectibles. There's going to be some Auroros here, don't get hit by it, I'll just ignore it, and also these mice. I'm going to beat this cow on. I have the feeling it might make a door or something. <laughs> I'll kick it into the Auroros. Anyways, keep an eye out for that bomb as I try to glide. Fine, I've got to land before I can glide again. There, now let's start gliding. Too low. Okay, so these, these this part of the ground, this part of the ground will move. So there's a certain piece which will go down at one point to expose a door, if I remember correctly. Maybe I need to defeat this Tau Tau for it to appear. Well, let's beat the Tau Tau and see what happens. No, that just gave me a sticker. I'm sure there's a door to come. Maybe, I'm, maybe I was too late. Oh God, am I going to fail to 100% both of the levels? I've covered in today's episode. Will I have to do them both off screen? That's a sad thought. But we have an auto scrolling section again with boulders that will try to flatten you. Just keep out of their way. I'll start gliding. Why not? And just keep on the descent. We have a primid with a, another facial design we might not have seen before. And it's hurting me. So I'm going to make it my best intentions to get it away from me. And then it just disappears. To make way for a big primid. So two of them at once, that could be a problem. Indeed it was. Those two big primids took out my meta knight. Oh my face, that must make big primid the best character in the game. Except for the fact that Ike was then able to defeat it. That can crush you, so keep out of its way. Use the star rod appropriately, and just don't let these bomb you in your face. 
your precious, precious face. I need my face to live. So, um, there's a collectible just down there, I'm sure you saw it. Fire yourself into it. Even if I have missed a collectible earlier on, I'm still going to aim to collect everything I can. I might as well get it in one recording. And that's apparently just a pointless cannon, which will do nothing but screw you over. And I went back into it again. There. No! Ah, oh, I'm doing... I got Donkey Kong. Okay, so we got Marth. He might do better at it. Go into that cannon, please. And there's a door where you can collect more and more collectibles. And just... Oh, you can't grab that ledge. Fine, I am going to have to use the warning sign platform after all. But first, get this, collect this bunch of stickers in the lower right. And then get it in the top right. That's a Wrinkly Kong trophy. And it's as if to say... You can't, Donkey Kong, so I am going to watch over you. No, we're not using the radiator, who is the one that failed. And then Plasma Kirby. Let's make our way back through the door and back on with the wild, wild whiz. It's so wild. And then, for whatever reason, they decide to plonk you all the way back here. You might be able to jump at a good point to get out of there. Can we grab that ledge? Oh, we don't need to. Hop into that barrel. And then we can get back onto the main path. Is there going to be a roader or some kind of enemy? Nope. We just go through the door. All right, that's simple enough. So we have a collectible with a heart container. And then we go through the door. And we have a cutscene which instantly heals you. So on your first playthrough, that max information is very pointless because you get automatically healed anyway. But in a second playthrough of a level... Uh, there won't be cutscenes, so you would go into this boss battle, yes, with damage. Now, I think Marth is actually the best character in the game for boss battles, so let's try and make use of it. This is Galleon, and that is the reason that Marth is the best character in the game of boss battles. I was too late with that counter. See, Marth can just use counter and counter all of the boss's attacks and do loads of damage in the process. He's also got a really quick forward air and the down smash which hits twice. So yeah, Marth is the top choice for Galleon. Uh, that attack doesn't have a hitbox in the air, so I wasn't doing any good countering that. He's gonna fall onto me, I'm just gonna sword swipe him. See, that's how good Marth is at boss battles. I do plan to show off boss battles mode at the end of this LP, as I've said before. I won't use Marth because that would be a bit too broken. And there's a hothead there, so... Oh, let's get punched in the face! I didn't realise the punch was going to extend that far. Meta Knight is also a very good character for boss battles as well. His neutral air will hit more than once, and his down smash, not only is it quick, that will also hit twice, so don't do the dash attack by accident. There, you might be able to hear me clicking the shoulder buttons. I will obviously be doing that a lot in boss battles to dodge attacks. It can't be helped. But Galleon's not got much life left in him. There, that's the end of Galleon. So as I swing my sword and collect this trophy of... Oh, it's that robot game on DS, I think. Can't remember the name, it's really Japanese. And then Galleon's like, no, And then just jumps through the floor and dies. Except he doesn't quite die. Foreshadowing for the next episode... But look at all the trophies we've got. I'm going to try and 100% the levels that I didn't. Did I get 100% in that? Where, where even... Uh, yeah, I did 100% that, but... I'm going to try and 100% the ruins off-screen. In the next episode, we will be going to the ruined hall. Goodbye.